Hey everyone, welcome back to Storytime with Vivi. This story is going to be very interesting. I don't know if you know about it, but it's Rapunzel. Now, if you remember, Rapunzel was in a tower locked up and she had long, 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 long hair. Welcome back to Storytime with Vivi. Now, if you remember, we were doing the story of Rapunzel. And we were talking about some things about Rapunzel, how she was trapped in this tower, how she couldn't get out, where she wanted to explore the world and so forth, okay? So we're going to finish the story, then we're going to talk some more about it, okay? Are you ready to begin? All right, so we're gonna keep where we uh, left off. Um, Rapunzel said, I get so lonely in this tower all by myself. My dear, greed is your problem. Not loneliness, said her captor. There are maidens in this world far less than you, and then they would be happy to have the protection of this tower. I will not hear any more of this nonsense. You should be grateful for the life that I've given you. Despite what she said, this daily exchange didn't make Rapunzel more grateful or only more curious. She didn't believe the world was as bad as the woman said. She spent all day gazing at the woods around her, dreaming about what it was like outside of the tower. Rapunzel prayed every day that she would find a way to leave the tower and have someone to leave with. Soon an answer to her prayer arrived, but she didn't find it. It found her. A young, handsome man was wandering through the forest when he discovered Rapunzel's tower in the woods. He was a curious person himself and circled the base of the tower to find a way inside. Okay, when the old woman arrived, her daily visit that she did with Rapunzel, the young man hid behind this thorn bush. He watched as she called up to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel appeared in the window and dropped her hair for her to climb up. The young man's heart raced upon seeing Rapunzel. Ooh, he had never seen a girl such as beautiful as she. And he wanted nothing more than to climb up to the tower and meet her. He waited outside the tower and listened to Rapunzel and the old woman's conversation. It, it was the same as, as it had been every day. Rapunzel's request to leave the tower, they were dismissed. And she told her how grateful that she should be for being able to be where she was. The young man was compelled to save poor Rapunzel from this tower and from that old woman. The next day, he returned to the tower with a plan to meet her. He waited for the old woman to arrive, and he hid from view as she called up the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The hair was lowered, and so the old woman climbed up to the window. She and the young woman had the same conversation as always, just as they had before. When they finished... And the old woman climbed down Rapunzel's hair. She left the tower for her home in the village. Now, isn't that a shame? She just left Rapunzel there all by herself, locked up in that tower. The young man waited until he was certain that she was gone. And then he called up to the tower himself, disguising his voice. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And so, huh, she'd never visited Rapunzel twice in a day. Fearing something was wrong, Rapunzel quickly lowered her hair for the collar. She never had any other guests besides the old woman, so it gave her quite a scare to see a young man climb through the window. Uh, who, who are you? she asked. Don't worry, I won't harm you. Forgive me, but I saw you in this tower yesterday, and I had to meet you, said the young man. Well, where are you from? Rapunzel asked. Well, the village at the edge of the woods, he said. There's a village at the edge of the woods, Rapunzel asked. And her eyes grew wide as the idea. Please, you must tell me all about it. The young man told Rapunzel everything there was to know about his village. 
He told her about all the woods and shops and markets, houses and schools. He told her about his family and his friends and how they treated one another so differently than the old woman had treated her. How wonderful, Rapunzel said with a dreamy sigh. There's a lot more I'd like to tell you, said the young man. May I come back and visit you again? I would love that, Rapunzel said. Every day from then on, when the old woman had come and gone, the young man would climb up Rapunzel's hair and visit her in the tower. Each day, he would bring new things to show her from around the world outside. He showed her maps of his village, maps of the forest, maps of the kingdom, maps of the known world. He brought her books and scrolls so she could read all about places and people that she didn't even know existed. If I could only leave this tower and see the world with my own eyes, Rapunzel desperately said. Well, I'll help you leave the tower so that you can travel the world together. We can go, the young man said. But but what about my mother, Rapunzel asked. She, she'd be heartbroken if I left. A real mother doesn't keep her child locked away in a tower, he said. A real mother would want you to leave and have experiences. She would want you to live and learn and love. With all that said, the young man kissed Rapunzel for the first time in her life. Rapunzel felt like a person and not a prisoner. Oh my goodness, how about that? She decided to leave the tower, even if it was the last thing that she ever did. How will I get down without my mother noticing, she said. Leave it to me, the young man said. I'll come up with something so that she won't even be the wiser. From that day forward, when the young man visited the tower, he brought Rapunzel handfuls of twine, that same color as her hair. She would twist the twine into a rope and then braid the rope into her hair so that the old woman would never find it. Once the rope was as long as her hair, Rapunzel planned to use it to climb down the tower and to be free. At the time, it seemed like a perfect plan. The longer the rope became, the more Rapunzel's and the young man's excitement even grew. However, their excitement made them careless, and one afternoon, the young man foolishly left one of his maps behind. The old woman found the map. She screamed at Rapunzel. Tell me who's been visiting you, she demanded. No, 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 Rapunzel said with a quivering jaw. Tell me now, or I will curse them. I will find out who they are, she said. Just a young man from the village at the edge of the woods, Rapunzel said. It is so, is it not, it, why is it wrong to have a friend? Huh, Rapunzel burst into tears. The old woman had never seen her so sad before. It was the first time that she felt sorry for Rapunzel, and she kneeled down to comfort her. However, all the old woman's guilt quickly diminished. She stroked Rapunzel's head and found the rope braided into her hair. You horrible, ungrateful girl. After everything I've done for you, you were going to leave the tower and run off with that scoundrel. I'll make sure that you never see each other again. So she left the tower and returned with an ax and a rope ladder. She chopped off all of Rapunzel's hair with this ax and then forced her down the ladder. She dragged Rapunzel into the forest abandoned her at a spot so deep in the woods that she could never find her way back. Okay, that was really me. I'm just sorry, but that was terrible. The witch returned to the tower, discarded the ladder and the axe in the shrubbery below, and waited for the young man to arrive the next day. For all he knew, Rapunzel would be freed soon, so there was an extra bound in his step. He stood at the base of the tower and called up, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Oh, the old woman let Rapunzel's hair down for that young man to climb up. When he reached the top of the tower, she pulled it out of his hands and knocked him off the window ledge. The thorn bush below broke his fall, but the thorns pierced his eyes and blinded him. 
the young man wandered around in the wilderness, not knowing which direction he was headed. For months and months, the young man wandered in the forest blindly. Every day he called for help until his voice grew hoarse, but no one ever heard him. Miraculously, the young man and Rapunzel found each other in the woods, and she wasn't alone. Since they had been separated, Rapunzel had given birth to twins. You're a father, she said. We can be a family now. The young man cried tears of both joy and pain. He was happy to have his family, but he knew that he would never lay eyes on them. Rapunzel rested his head in her lap and cried with him. Her tears rolled down his face and fell into his eyes. Once again, the magic of the Rapunzel lettuce proved itself useful, for Rapunzel's tears gave the young man back his sight. The first thing he saw after regaining his vision was his beautiful children. Now able to recognize forest around them, the young man guided Rapunzel and their children back to the village from which he had come. Once he was reunited with his old family, he and Rapunzel were married and continued a family of their own. Thank you.